the tutorial on how to get individual error bars added into um, a graph using Google Sheets. If you do have Excel, I'd recommend using Excel first. I'll add a link in the descriptions below um, and you can go and have a look at a video I did on that. It's a lot easier in Excel. Google still has a couple of hiccups as you'll see in this video. So you kind of have to, you have to trick it um, to make this work. It's not that hard. It'll take, a, maybe it'll give me five minutes. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. So I have my data table um, and we'll go from there. So here's my data table. If I'm in a graph, I probably have a bunch of trials. So I want to get my average, um, average, and my error bars are going to be based on standard deviation for this example. Um, and I'm a bit of a stickler for formatting, so sorry, bear with me. Uh, let me just click this in. It might be handy for you to see how, what I'm doing as well, because it's just a nice little format. It helps in the end. Um, so to get my averages, start typing average. Google gives me something here, but it's actually not what I want because it includes this area right over here. It's just easier for me to just select the average and select just my trials, hit enter. There you go. Um, and I can use this little button here to pull down. And if I pull that little square down, it'll copy that format. Um, you might, well, let's see. First, here's the standard deviation equals STDEV. And then let's select standard deviation. Same thing, just the trials. A lot of people go one too far to the average, just the trials. And there we go. I was gonna say, you might see a bunch of strange decimal places. Um, and if you want that to be, or you do want it to be the same as your average, so one decimal place there. Oops, wow, there it is. And then you can drag down. So that, for, that formatting will copy down. Now here's the weird, so far it's exactly what you do in Excel, but here comes the weird Google Sheets part. So I'm gonna copy paste, I just did a copy paste there. And actually, you know what, I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's go back. Uh, I'm just gonna copy the data in this case. Copy and paste. And then my averages, I'm going to copy and instead of just paste, I'm going to right click, paste special values only. That will keep it just to the numbers rather than trying to fix the formulas down. And you'll, you'll probably have an error if you do that. Get the same decimal places so everything looks okay. I don't care about formatting here because I won't see this in the final report. This is just to help create the graph. Now, here's the strange thing that Google does. I'm just going to work as I talk over this. So I'm copy and pasting the data in this weird pattern here, and I'll explain why. As soon as I'm done, I can't do two things at once. My brain doesn't function that way. Okay. Um, if you have all your data together in Excel, you just go here and here, highlight those, make your graph, all done. Well, pretty much done with that part. Um, in, X, in Sheets, it sees this as one, series one set of data um, what you want to do is each unit i mean each point 1.9 1.0 that each one of those has to be its own series because that's the only way right now that you can add error bars is by adding them to a, a series so those have to be separate if you're not with me don't worry you'll see it in just a second when i when i get the graph up so this is how we're gonna create the graph. We're gonna scroll down to select that whole sheet, hold command if you're on a Mac, um, and then copy this whole section. And when you hit the chart button, it looked a little weird at first. You'll have to select what kind of chart. I recommend a scatter plot for this. And it starts to look what we're, kind of like what we want. Um, now, we're going to go down and fix this up. If it doesn't look like this, you might see something strange like this one or like that one or some strange things here. Clicking these bottom buttons, actually, I don't know what it does behind the scenes, frankly, but it tweaks the graph quite a bit to where you can usually find what you're looking for. Sorry, not the developer here. Um, now let's customize 
this to get it to do what we want. So in the series, I'm going to open that up and you'll see all series here. Aha, but behind, I'm hiding the little dots. That dark blue dot would be here. There'd be a dark red dot representing this data point. This yellow dot is actually hiding behind. And all of these represent my blue. Why does that matter? Because this blue one, if I take the last one, that's the only place I can add a trend line because it's a trend between all these data points. Okay, so my trend line's in, woohoo, almost there. I wonder how long this video is gonna be. Thanks, Google. <laughs> um, now, we get back up to the data series one. This is this point here that I wanna work with. All right, I wanna add the error bar. So I'm gonna click error bar. I'm gonna click constant, not percentage, constant, and manually type in what I see up here. So 0.5, great. There's my first error bar. I'm gonna do it again for the next one. Again, make... Voila, error bars. The colors you can change. So notice these colors aren't quite the same throughout. But overall, that's what you're looking at. Um, you can add the titles up here, chart access and titles. Uh, with horizontal axis titles, um, vertical axis titles, and you can ultimately get rid of this, um, this legend, which just looks weird with a bunch of dots. If you click it, it opens up the legend, auto, none. And that's it. Okay, I hope that video helped. Like I said, if you have Excel, look in the links in the comment below or in the description below and have a look at that video and you'll save a few minutes. Okay, bye.